Well, top of the morning to you, Southern Oregon. I'm Alice Lima here with my co-host, Pete Belcastro. We're both real estate brokers here in Southern Oregon for John L. Scott. And uh, welcome to the Real Estate Show. We're here to talk about the local real estate and everything that's happening in our little valley. And it has been uh, such an upheaval this week as interest rates are changing. Pete, um, what's been going on in your neck of the woods? You hit it right on the note. First of all, nice to see you. Look at this. We're we're in the middle of a heat wave. Um, first of uh-huh. all, look at <laughs> yeah. uh, and that's miserable. And the amount of electricity we're consuming. You know, one of the things this has done uh, in the water situation that we face, I think people are realizing that climate change is, is real, uh, more so than maybe people want to admit, because it has changed. And boy, we're sure in for a long, hot summer. So Please be please be careful if you're if you're going to go out and about. So having, okay, having said that, I think people are you hit it right on the nose. I think people are sometimes maybe getting ahead of knowing interest rates are going to raise. They've been approved for a loan, they haven't found one, and they're out there doing. And they're out there trying to find them. On the other hand, Alice, as we have watched week after week, listings have slowly, slowly, slowly crept up. Uh, and this week we'll, we'll give you those stats today and kind of what's going on, what's selling, where it's selling. Because each individual market in each individual community in each county really is a little bit different. Uh, Combined, the market continues to perform really, really well. There's a lot going on, a lot of buying, a lot of selling, a lot of financing. uh, But still, the low inventory, where it's at, it makes the market so interesting as we go through it for you each week. Well, and you know, Pete, um, anybody who owned real estate in the last 24 months got such a huge bump from the COVID and then from the fires. There's a lot of profit taking. And some folks are are using that as a huge down payment on another property, which I think is just brilliant because then you have still a reasonable uh, payment uh, and you have this other bigger, better property, uh, but well, not for long, depending on the rates, right? Well, you know, we've been saying, I remember when we, you, several years ago, we were saying, look, if interest rates turn around and change, uh, you know, all bets are off. Real estate has driven the market in the pandemic. And, and since then, it is still a driving force. And uh, But it's going to change. You know, it has to change. We talked about plateauing, where, you know, prices hit a plateau. I think that's still in effect right now. But boy, it's dynamic and it's changing. And I can't wait to share more information with everybody as well as you. So we're going to have to take a quick break uh, for our sponsors. So please do not touch that dial. We're brought to you by John L. Scott of Southern Oregon, Rogue Valley Association Realtors and Mutual of Omaha Mortgage. Guy Giles will be right back. Well, welcome back to the Real Estate Show, Southern Oregon. I'm Alice Lima here with Pete Belcastro. We're both real estate brokers here in John L. Scott in Southern Oregon. And one of the things that I noticed this week, Pete, as more listings finally come on the market in the lower price ranges, they're still getting a lot of showings, but they're not getting as many offers. Have you seen that? Well, you maybe have it. Okay. No, I have, I have, yes, I guess yes and no. But we talked about it plateauing that the market, uh, as, as it changes, especially in midsummer, uh, plateaued. You, you can't, I mean, Jackson County had a $510,000 average price a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and, you know, you can only go so high with so many things that are above you. And so it had to plateau. And I think maybe it is softening up a little bit, the plateau. Um, I think that's probably good for everybody, to be honest with you, Alice. Uh, the craziness of 10 and 12 multiple offers, or sometimes even more, is, is uh, yeah, it, that doesn't really help anybody, to be honest with you, not even the seller sometimes. So we've got to come back to earth a little bit, don't you think? I mean, I mean we've got to come down. We have to be more realistic here, especially going forward, because the future is, is uh, there's a little more uncertainty out there because we know the Fed has already announced they're going to raise interest rates, which means that mortgages, which are well, you, with 3.3, 3, 3.2, where you're at, and you know, some of these uh, are probably going to go up. And that is going to change in terms of what you can afford to buy. Uh, and so the, the seller pool is going to be taking a, a, a big look. Uh, so that's a so I can say, you know, each, like two or three weeks ago, we, you know, we, we weren't talking about this yet too much. And now it's kind of become the topic, uh, the topic du jour, because everyone knows this is going to happen. It's not like matter of if anymore. It's just a matter of when. 
Yeah. And it's interesting because I don't know if sellers understand when the interest rates go up, that will affect not only how many buyers they have available for their particular yeah. property, but also what price the buyers will afford. And even if um, the buyers can afford it, some part of a transitioning market is the buyers get a little bit fed up with the seller market and they start pushing back and they start being a little bit more demanding and they won't, they just won't play ball in those higher price points uh, for their market, for their neighborhood. So I think it's going to be uh, an interesting rest of the summer. And then the other question I had for you is, you know, in a normal cycle here in Southern Oregon housing, Pete, uh, you know, July is usually kind of quiet as people take their vacations and get ready to come back in August and go back to school. And I know the schools are planning on opening, but we've had so much back and forth with all of the families and the school age children. I wonder if we're going to have our normal summer cycle for buying and selling houses. What do you think? Um, good question. I don't know. I know people are certainly out. I was, uh, out in RV now in my, in my world a little bit. And, uh, Parks are full, people are full. There's a lot of people on the move. Maybe they're looking at that more so, as you're right, than real estate. But, you know, uh, the, the market is the market is performing well. I mean, I, I don't want to ever say that it's not. Uh, but let me just give you an example, Alice, of kind of where we're at here as we go into July. Because, you know, it's the 4th of July weekend, you know, next weekend. And so, you know, we're, we're Can you believe there. it? Here we go. Remember, do you remember the last year of the 4th of July at this time? Uh, everything was, uh, was still closed and we, they were opening in July. There was an opening for a few months for businesses and restaurants in July. So, but this year is totally different. I mean, the, the demand and the people out, uh, people have money, it seems like. Uh, I've heard of uh, more businesses who had to close down for lack of help are getting more people back in work, which I think is, is a wonderful thing. Uh, so all, all that contributes. But we're still in such a, a problem with how the total number of housing available to us and things like that. Here's the reason. There was 384 single family homes for sale in Jackson County last week. Okay. There was also 105 sales. Alice, that's a lot. <laughs> no? Yeah. There's still a lot of hungry buyers out there for yeah. sure. For 98 properties went pending last week. But our pool, our pool of uh, available homes increased by 40 from the week from the week of prior, which I thought was very interesting. So again, the list number of listings are going to be 160 in Josephine County and 131 uh, in Klamath County right now that are on that are on the market. Uh, what's interesting is well, what type of what is on the market, right? I mean, we know that the top sales are down below three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Out of that hundred, out of that hundred and five sales in Jackson County, you know the majority are under under three fifty. If you can find a house, and they go off the market in two days, in three days, in four days, so you have to be ready there. But still, it's the luxury market that is so interesting to me to watch because in Jackson County this last week of that three hundred and eighty four homes, you know, Alice, eighty four of them are luxury homes. It's about a quarter of the market. Uh, our luxury homes. That's nine hundred thousand dollars priced and above. So that's a change. There's twenty four, uh, thirty four. Josephine County has thirty four luxury homes on the market out of hundred and sixty. And Klamath County has twelve. So the luxury market is alive and well. Uh, but still, what's selling? Top exactly. That, that area is exactly. Yes. Anyway, so. It's, that's what makes it so interesting as far as when you look at the market. If you're still looking at 250 or you're cleared for 350, even 400,000, that, that, is, that has not changed in, in how long. That's the top area. That's what people, most people can afford. We've been able to go up to 500 and 600,000 because of low interest rates. And people have bought yep. those properties and they, they probably made a really good deal because they can afford those payments that they're getting with the low interest rates. Uh, that may be changing. So uh, people are out there looking. There's no question that the demand is still there. And uh, uh, it's going to be, you know, the next two months, it's going to be dry. It's going to be hot, please. No fires. Uh, so we don't have the smoke, you know, that just drove so many people away from our valley. 
So, uh, well, and the little lightning storm we had this week, you know, it started a couple little ones. They got them out. It was all fine. We had a really good rain. Some people had hail. So, you know, for those of you new to Southern Oregon, get used to it. <laughs> if you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes, right? So Without. one of the um, situations though with the water is a lot of these rural properties that have deeded irrigation rights were priced with water. And so if you're on the market with deeded irrigation rights and your ditch gets shut off or you start having to do some kind of conservation, what does that do to the value of those big farms? Well, first of all, even though there's no irrigation water in Klamath, Talon Irrigation District, these kinds of places, you still have to pay for your water rights, okay? So you have to pay uh, as if you were getting your full allotment, right? First of all. Yeah, people uh, should know that. If you don't pay, you, what happens? Well, you could lose your right to the right to the water when it per comes maybe permanently. Yeah. What this really shown to me, I think more than anything, and again, people who live in the cities, Alice, are really uh, immune from this. Um, I know you live in Medford, and so you get water from Big Butte Springs and from the Rogue River and Medford Water Commission, which is the most amazing thing that they you know they have there supplies most of the domestic water in the valley. Uh, but if you don't live in that urban area right now, things are really interesting. You talked about, you just, you know, you mentioned just about um, uh, uh, irrigation rights. What about wells? And there are tens of thousands of wells uh, that are out there. And I've heard, I'm hearing horror stories already uh, of wells drying up much quicker than they ever have. Uh, sometimes, you know, wells dry up every, every, every summer, say in Sam's Valley, and you got to bring water in, but it's happening more often in where, some in some places in Sam's Valley. We're not condemning all of Sam's Valley. <laughs> no, 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 absolutely. It's just, it's just a lot of them there. Uh, if they're shallow wells, I mean, deeper wells are different and things like that. Some mm -hmm. are contaminated because of this. Anyway, that issue in terms of rural properties, agents and buyers really need to be aware of, and sellers need to need to know these things. Alice, so just in the last three months, okay, in, on rural properties in Jackson County, just to, again, it had a you know twenty four percent increase from uh, from the previous year, and the average, uh, me, the median price uh, for rural properties the last three months was five hundred and eighty seven thousand dollars. Wow, That's what, uh, the, the 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 urban price, okay. So people yeah. are buying these, and if you advertise on them, and this is the thing that I think, you're, and I. I even brought this up to, uh, to, to to Jeff Rogers, actually, the owner and principal broker at John L. Scott. You know, we tell people you have irrigation rights, and, you, and we've been telling them for decades and decades, you know, you, you got water. This year has proven to everyone that we can no longer guarantee that. And we're going to have to, I think, start assessing that because in selling these properties and, and, and the value of them saying you may or may not have irrigation water, you have the rights to it but there's no guarantee you can get it. You may or may not have it, and you may or may not have it for so long. And so that the reason that's important, that if you strategize what you want to do with the water, you want to have an orchard, you want to have a vineyard, you want to have pasture, that, that plays a real direct role in what you can possibly do. Because I really do think with climate change around us and what we've experienced this year, that we need to be aware of this stuff because I don't think it's going to change much. And, and we we're, uh, we're in a real dire situation here with water in the rural areas and the farming communities around us, not in the cities. Okay, I guess remember that, not in the cities. You know, they got great water. Grants Pass gets its water out of the Rogue River. Medford gets it, you know, Big Boot Springs. Klamath gets it out of the Conger Wells. It's not on the urban area, really. It's really in the rural areas that are really, really hurt by this and hit by it. And what will happen to real estate? I think their values cannot continue at $587,000 Alice for median prices. Uh, on even that. You with just can't water. do it. <laughs> even with water, it's not sustainable. Even with water, yeah. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. One of the things I, I encourage people when they're buying rural property uh, to consider is whether you're having a wet year or a dry year to consider having extra storage. Even if you think you don't need it, putting in a storage tank. My personal favorites are the in-ground concrete water storage systems, 1,000 gallons, 1,500, 2,000 extra gallons. You can also have above ground. Um, and then when you have a situation like this year, you can have somebody deliver water to you. Um, uh, and that's not, it's not as stressful. I don't know that you can have an ongoing farm uh, with that kind of storage, but it could get you through some of the more difficult weeks. You, you, you mentioned water, water delivery. 
uh, right now it's a it's an absolute madhouse. Is it a uh, madhouse? Oh, well, you know, they used to be able to to go to the Medford Service Center over on Columbus, and that's where you you can pick up water there. You know, the big bulk water. You can't do that anymore. There, you have to go out to the Dove treatment to the Dove mm. treatment plant out mm-hmm. by the Rogue River by Tuval State Park. That's mm-hmm. where you get the water. But Alice, there's lines out there and uh, for water. Uh, and, you know, it's only like one spigot and there's big, 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 uh, you know, trucks come in there with a carry out, you know, several thousand gallons, et cetera. And I understand the lines are really, are really long and people I know are getting very frustrated and water delivery right now is absolutely huge. And, and I don't downplay it at all. Uh, you just can't call up today and say, I need some water today like you used to, uh, because this, this tap, the only place you can get it is uh, out there at the Duff Treatment Plant out of the from from the from Metro Water Commission. Yeah, and you're Crazy. competing with some of the the bigger hauling companies that are filling up those big trucks, like you were talking. Because people like me won't go fill up out of the spigot. Even, I, I call right, Marines or somebody. I, I, I talked to <laughs> I at the, at Coastal Alice. I said, "My goodness, you you've got all these these it seems like hundreds of big holding tanks for water tanks. Those uh-huh. black white ones you see when you drive by." Uh He says the demand is great. All of them. So people are very much aware they're capturing even rainwater. If you captured rainwater during the storm we had the other day, you'd have have filled all your cisterns and all your tanks up with that off your your roof had you had that in place. So uh, the people are aware of it. They're obviously uh, trying to adapt to what may be our new reality, just less water and how precious it really, really is. And it is. So we have to take a quick break. Uh, Pete Bell Castro, Alice Lima, both with John L. Scott here in Southern Oregon. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to the Real Estate Show, Southern Oregon. I'm Alice Lima here with my co-host, Pete Bill Castro. We're both brokers here at John L. Scott in Southern Oregon. And, you know, one of the things that happens in a tight uh, seller's market, Pete, is raw land becomes more attractive to people and they start considering doing building projects. Mm -hmm. Well, I, th- I think one of the phenomena that's come out of, of COVID uh, is probably on, on, on two fronts in, in, from what I've seen. One is, that, yes, you can buy raw land now you can because it's cheap, relatively cheap still in some areas, not all, uh, but you can put a manufactured home on it later. You can build a home on it later when you want it. People are saying, I need the land now before it's gone. And so we're seeing interest there for, for that type of use. I'm also seeing a, a use in rural properties. There's tons of areas, uh, you know, that are sometimes acts hard to get to, whatever. There are lots of five, seven acre parcels around uh, that people have, are buying to bring a RV, their, their RV to. They want a permanent spot to where they can then maybe put a deck out there, but, you know, not have, a, don't, don't have a well or don't have, you know, electric and things like that but they can come out there and camp on their own property in their own space. You know, when you got toys, when you've got our ATVs, you can ride around, that's fun. And so I think many people out of COVID thought that was something that they wanted to do. And I sold a property on that recently uh, for that very purpose, just to be able to bring my RV there and camp on my own property. Nobody will bother me. It's not crowded. Uh, and I thought, mm. you don't have to have a reservation then. That's actually, yeah. 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 Okay, pay if you know if you can do that so uh interest in land sales gent typically over 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 time you know lag behind the sales of, of new construction in, in in residential sales but we're seeing a lot of interest in vacant land and i think that i think that's that's good you know people have variety and it's out there and uh depending where you want to go you know uh you you can pay a lot or you can pay a little but uh, having your own place like that uh, seems to be a very new popular thing to do. I also think it is a indicator. This is just my opinion, but when we start having competition in raw land or a lot of price increase in raw land, I always consider that the crescendo of the market, the top of the market. And I start looking uh, to the short term future, medium term future, that is one of the things I look for because I consider raw land one of the weaker markets. And if raw land is getting competition in park manufactured home, and we're not saying anything bad about these um, kinds of property, we're just saying that they're not what uh, is normally the popular 
you know, with the, with the general public. So if you start seeing a rise in competition on one of those two or both those markets, that tells me start looking for some kind of a downturn or adjustment. And I think in our case, it's just going to be leveling off, but, um, but boy, if you're fighting over raw land with no well, <laughs> that's, that's an indicator of some kind in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I, and I don't, I don't dis- disagree with you. I think, uh, we never really talk about raw land much. I've never sold, I don't have really sold much of it. There's a lot of it out there uh, in, in different areas. It's not every area. You know, you want to buy a, a, you can't, you couldn't do it in Ashland, for example, or Jacksonville, you know, but you, you can in other places in the rural parts. So uh, there's a lot of raw land out there. I, I'm surprised when you start looking at, when you actually start looking at surprises, how much there is. But yes, there's much more interest in it. Uh, because of those reasons, I can buy it now. I can use it later. I have a place to go, and so I think we're. Gonna, and I think lenders need to get more in the game because it's pretty different. Is it difficult? Oh, that would be great. My, yeah. yeah. My my buyer had cash, which is which is you know easy, but lenders don't seem to want to want a loan on on raw land, do they? Because they, they consider buildings uh, to be valuable in the event of a foreclosure. So that's the thing is like the lenders are always looking at well, what if I get the property back? How am I going to yeah. sell it? So you know they really like they like uh, buildings to be on it. And that's why you have a lot of land out there because it's hard to buy unless you have generally have cash for those so well, and uh, yeah if you own raw land put a little money into it borrow you know ten thousand dollars from uncle fred and at least put in a well and i i'm not saying all wells are going to be ten thousand they were before the <laughs> corona um the well bid we got recently was higher than that but the fact that we got a well guy a good well guy to talk to us because i have a, a couple who's doing a um, they're putting a manufactured on land, which is hard to do right now because of the fires and everybody's busy and you have to hire a transporter, a house transporter with a big flatbed to bring your manufactured home to your lot. And that's different from the guy who sets it up. Ha ha. <laughs> but anyway, back to the well, um, if you are going to buy some property, it's nice if it has a well on it already, at least. And if you own property, think about improving it a little bit, put in a driveway, put in a septic, put in, put in a well, it'll be much easier to sell. Okay. Here's a good one here in selling a rural properties, you, uh, the buyers are generally going to have a well test. Yes. Here we are in the middle of out. Uh, should, should you, should you do a well test? You're going to run that, you're going to run that well for six hours. Just put the water down the drain. Uh, this is my we... favorite time to test wells is during a drought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think that's a waste of water in these wells. And I, and I, and I don't know what the answer you is. Have to... To, you have to know. And it's, yeah, you have to know. You, you so do not want to buy a property and not do that, that stress test. Well, okay. I think that that so be aware of that because look, we're in the middle of a drought, and a lot of these are going to go dry. They Just don't have to. Every- they don't have to run it on the ground, though. I do agree with you on that, and I never thought of that. Is maybe they should be capturing that water? Well, it's yeah. going back into the ground. But well, anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, I don't want to make the, it sound better than it is. They're running the, it for four hours on the ground. Yeah, that's what they're doing. Uh, and, and, and part of the things and why, why it's important, I mean, it's important to do that. It's also important to get the well uh, those tested now, especially mm-hmm. in a water year, uh, because it's worth knowing. There's been a lot of wells. I've talked with people who, who uh, wells have been contaminated uh, for different reasons. And we did a show, I don't even know when it was, a couple of years ago on that particular topic where um, different chemicals uh, leach into wells and, and they render them you know, useless. Uh, and so you have to then have it redone and try to get foster drilling to come right to right now to you uh, and do a well. They're backed oh, up. I, yeah, they're, some of those well people are booked out for a, a long, long, long time, months and months and months. So all this, you know, drives the price up and just delays. And I think uh, the word patience right now is, is probably a good one to use in trying to find uh, the help you need on these things. Try getting a manufactured home when it was over a year. Uh, with with Holton Holmes, remember when we did a show with them mm-hmm. before you even get one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you had you had the issues of, of timber, so you had try to try to get a remodeler, try to get the electricians. I mean, they're backed up, and you have to be patient with them, mm-hmm. contract especially. And so there's a lot going on because of the fires. So 
uh, it's, uh, it's doable. If you really, really want it to happen right now and you understand you're going to pay ridiculous amounts of money and you're going to be late every step of the way, it is possible because we're, we're helping that one couple right now get their manufactured set up, but it is, you know, it is every single day, a nail biter. <laughs> and, you know, they had to find temporary housing. Um, they're, they're hoping for just 90 days, but I'll tell you, Pete, it could easily be six months, but when it's all said and done, they're going to have a really nice spread and they're probably saving 150,000 on what it would have cost if they bought already built and that's yeah, why people yeah, go yeah. through this agony is <laughs> because you know that's yeah. a, that's a lot of nickels in your jeans yeah yeah you know uh from from, from a year ago uh it's, it's, actually, it's actually come down a year ago you know uh well not even a year ago listings were down you know 60 percent from the previous year uh-huh uh and right right now as we sit here in in june they're down 50 percent so we we have seen an increase in listings, but the, the interesting part when you when you break down and look at say Jackson County is where are those where are those uh, three hundred and fifty listings at you know wh where are they actually at and um, I mean I, I get to ask you this what what area could we, East Medford you know West Medford Ashland Jackson what area do you think has the most listings right now in all of Jackson County. What, what, what area? Oh, I got it. It has the thing. most listings available for sale right. on the market. They're right. Not, they're not selling the most listings, not selling. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh. I'm just kidding. So I would be tempted to say that we have a lot in Ashland or central point. Okay. Well, you're, you're right with Ashland. Ashland has 83 listings. It is more than East Medford and East Medford, you know, is all that's possible. because they're, they're overpriced and a lot of them have stairs. Sorry, you guys. I love it's, you, it, Ashlyn, but a lot also, of you have stairs. <laughs> also showing the trans, the transitory nature of that town uh, that people come in there and they move out so fast. It has the highest number. I mean, it has the, almost the least uh, that if it was 50% overall, it's only 20% down in Ashland. You see, so they're, mm -hmm. it was, why there's so many east medford is really down east medford is still down 60 percent. there's not a lot available in east medford you said you mentioned central point um and there's only uh 12 listings in all of central point right in now all of central point all of central point yeah and central so, point's really popular yeah it, it, it truly is and these listings and, and also just to be aware of how fast sometimes they go off in the in their uh you know scooped up that's why we tell you you have to have those pre-approvals with you the uh, i believe this last this last uh, in april and the national association of realtors i believe said 50 percent of all mortgages in the united states in april people had put down 20 percent or more yeah it's they're taking mortgage. profit yeah they've got well, all this equity it was only the third time that that's happened uh and so you have to be really ready because these those those properties that you want are so go off the market so fast. The hottest market has been for, for, for quite a few months now has been Josephine County. Yeah. Um, yeah. They go off their average days in the market and they had uh, 22 sales last week closed at $439,000 for the average price. And they went in 41 days. Well, and so we just had people who lived here in Jackson County that became remote workers and they just scooted over to Josephine County and Klamath. But yeah, I think there were just a lot of locals that shifted to that, to that zip well, code. Well, that's okay because finding replacement property uh, forces so many people out. Um, and as we talk about rent, especially in the rental markets and stuff, if, if, if houses are sold and new owner occupants come in, where do those renters go? And, and as you know, many of them have to leave the area. Uh, that's what gentrification is all about. And have we hit that point in Jackson County? I don't know, but we, uh, if, if our average price is gonna be, you know, in the 500,000 range, it's certainly going to eliminate a whole lot of people uh, in, our, in our community. And, and, you know, no one wants to see that. So the answer to that, how do we build, right? What are we building? What's gonna be new? Um, did you see, I saw where Warren Buffett has a, invested in a company that actually, Pre-fast homes, small homes. They ship them out to you like Sears did in, in, in the old days, but these are already done. You just put them together. Isn't uh, that great? Like right. Ikea of houses. Yeah. We've got 
motel conversions that we've seen. Representative Pam Marsh a few weeks ago was with us, told about the bills to convert, um, you know, old, older motels, which they're doing all over in Klamath and in Medford uh, for housing to help any you know, homeless issues. So, you know, there's a lot going on in, in besides just the buying and selling, just trying to get people, where do you go and how do you replace where you're coming from? And that's still a huge problem. That has not changed. The rental market is still a huge problem as well. As you know, as rents go up, as the inventory has shrunk because of the laws that were passed. So, whoa, while the market itself just chugs along buying and selling like this, the rest of the market is still in flux and in turmoil in a lot of areas. So we will be right back from a word from our sponsors. Do not touch that dial. Pete Belcastro and Alice Lima with The Real Estate Show. We'll be right back. Good morning again, Southern Oregon. Welcome back to The Real Estate Show. I'm Alice Lima, and I'm here with my co-host, Pete Bocastro. We're both real estate brokers here in Southern Oregon with John L. Scott Real Estate. And we're chatting again about our Market Watch episode of our radio show. And this week, we're starting to see not only more listings, but the buyers pushing back a little bit. You know, Pete, I had a couple of different situations where buyers wrote really good offers, They got a counter back from the seller two times. It happened this week. The buyers walked away. They just said, I'm not doing it. They just said, I will wait a couple of weeks to see if something else comes on the market. And you know what? It did. Mm -hmm. So it's coming in trickles. It's coming in trickles, but it's interesting. The attitude of some of the buyers. Yeah, no, uh, that's what, that's what you call the plateau that that we've talked about because uh, you can only go so much and buyers are only going to do so much. And, And they know that you're seeing more listings come on the market. We certainly should. You know, the low was, I was just I went back and checked my little stats back in January, at the end of January, there were just 238 listings in Jackson County, 238. So we're at 384 right now, but look what <laughs> come on the market and sold. So that may not sound impressive, but it really is when you think that there were just hundreds sold and hundreds are still pending. So, uh, uh, we, we have to, we have that to <laughs> we have that to contend with still, but uh, they're coming back, and that makes it uh, uh, people saying, "I'll wait and I'll wait until the next one comes up. I don't mm-hmm. have to do this. Maybe I don't have to leave. Maybe I'm in a good position as a buyer. If the buyer is in a good position where they don't have to do something, in other words, your lease is not ending, or you you've already sold your place or whatever. Or you, or you and, saved uh, up all your money from the shutdown. You have buckets of money in your house. <laughs> you can wait. <laughs> I want to put more down on a down payment. And that means something to a seller when they see that too. So uh, th- th- there's, there's, there, there, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. I think the biggest thing is that you have to be prepared. You know, you have to be able to walk away. As you say, don't, don't do something that's going to put you in a bad position uh you know in the future with this uh i thought guy giles had a good point a couple of weeks ago with their new pre-approval process to where it's already kind of it's the second the second phase has gone through when they when they give it to you that you're you've got that you know you don't have to wait you know i'm waiting right now on several waiting for the uh the loans you know to be finally approved and uh and it's, it's nerve-wracking sometimes uh and a lot of times uh as you know things fall through and that's mm-hmm. another point before out of here is that even though maybe you you didn't get the house you wanted and it's pending many times and don't think that it doesn't happen because it does happen quite a bit uh, they come back on the market because it's fallen through yeah writing Whether backup a- offers is a great idea you, so yes if you really do like it i would say go ahead and do the backup offer because you never know that's how i got my first house in ashland back in the early 90s is that was- right we, took, we, we were the second spot. It fell through and we got it. So wow. uh, and it happens a lot. So don't, uh, don't, don't be turned off sometimes because, you, and you can write backup offers for quite a few things. You can have two or three or four. It doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, uh, but if you really like it, don't, if you lose it, don't walk away from it because that can come back and help you. So how much um, impact on the number of new listings coming, how much the vaccination situation that we have more people vaccinated, how much of that do you think played into people being willing to list their house now? Well, I, I th- we had a lot of uncertainty and people didn't go. It was always about where do I go? And I think it's still that way. You've always said some people, uh, people die, people get divorced, uh, people move for jobs. Those are you have to do something the others we don't have to 
And if we go, where do we go? And that has been the problem from uh, years and year, quite a few years now around this. Where do I go? Especially with low inventory and the prices the way they are. So uh, people, do, so if you're going to go, sometimes you have to leave the community. That's what we're talking about. You, you have to go someplace else. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I've got people that, again, are remote workers, and they got to go uh, back east to Florida, Georgia. We've got some that went to Tennessee. They're having the time of their life. They have the still uh, the great job. They're in a housing market that's a little more comfortable, and they're happy with their environment. So sometimes, you know, life pushes you in those directions, and it ends up being really good. But you're also talking about a very tiny portion. Of, of the market overall, people who can do that, uh, you know, not, well, not those, all. Yeah, those are, those are people who can either take their job with them or they're retired and they take their, their okay. pension with them. Yeah, they're, they're not the workers who, who do, you know, who work out in, in down, down everywhere. So that's a, sm that's a small part. And I think it, before we also go, another effect that we're going to see go on are really getting small towns, uh, you know, who, who don't have much inventory anyway, but where people are moving to even further out. Let's say, you know, where if you left Medford, a lot of times you go to Eagle Point. Remember, that's, that's where you went to get away from things. Now you're going to go to Prospect. Uh, in Josephine County, well, I went here. Now I'm going to go to Wolf Creek. Uh, Klamath, I was here. I'm going to go down to Merrill. I'm going to go down to Malin. Yeah. Uh, because for those places. But what's happening there now is that the pressure on those communities, which don't have much housing, is also driving up prices there. So again, as, as we get out of here, we had in the last three months from a year ago, a 24% increase in the value of our overall, overall in the counties. It, it varies by community, Isn't that yeah. something. but 24%, that is a huge number. We, we haven't seen that number. I've never seen that number that high, you know, as we watch this. So it's a huge, it's a huge, it's a huge issue right now. And affordability is coming into play. Uh, and, um, we have we're a great place to live, you know, and demand is there. What happens this summer is still up for grabs with fires, with uh, with water. Uh, so we don't know what's going to happen the rest of the summer. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to find out, I think. Well, and if we uh, keep getting more listings, that's going to affect the prices as well. Uh, number one, I think so number one. But, we'll but they can't be luxury homes, Alice. My goodness, a, a quarter of the market. Well, and I, I have home. a belief that even in the million dollar price range, you have a certain period of time to sell a property. Otherwise you're off base with your price or there's something wrong with the property and you need to look at that. So um, the idea that million dollar properties take a year, I don't think anything should take a year. You should not be languishing a few months, you know, maybe just to test the market, get some feedback, but you know, not a year. If, if it takes wish, a year, something's wrong. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I was in the market for a million dollar property because the choices. Yeah. You've never had as many choices as you can for a buyer. But yeah. by God, looking, I'm looking at $350,000 or 400,000 or 425. Well, this is why the, the group purchases are so popular right now, you know, where families are coming together and buying them together, then they can hit that million yeah. dollar mark. Yeah. Well, it's, it's opportunities that are out there and we'll see what happens. Uh, We'll watch interest rates this week, see if anything changes there, Alice. I hope they don't. Well, they started uh, right yesterday on Friday. They started going right. up a little bit. It's it's the they're already starting to these agencies are starting to move it up. So, yeah, it's already happened. If you're not locked in, get locked in. And that's what I think people are trying to do right now. I think if we had talked to the lenders, they're pretty busy because people know this is coming. Get locked in if you can right now. Yeah, there's a lot to it. Be ready. Uh, because as we say, the market changes every darn day. Every week we get with you, it's different. Yeah. Uh, this week was different than last week. It really was. And, uh, but that's why we have to talk about it every week because it's volatile. We, it's yeah, volatility. We, yeah. We really want our, our viewers and listeners to to be good consumers here and be and be very smart and cognizant of what you're doing. And uh, yeah, and it, then it becomes more fun, you know, and, and not a burden. Uh, less as you go, and less scary. You know what you're, <laughs> Yeah, if you know what you're doing, you know what to prepare for, it just makes the process a lot more fun. You have a, have a great week and uh, stay too. cool. But hey, the weather is so hot. Please be safe. 
All right, Pete Belcastro, Alice Lima signing off. There's another rendition of this tomorrow at 6 p.m. Thank you, John L. Scott, Guy Giles of Mutual of Omaha Mortgage and the Rogue Valley Association of Realtors. We appreciate our sponsors very much. Have a beautiful weekend. Bye now.